we perhaps break down into sections with this committee on both sides so some of these questions, fundamental questions, should be answered. Uh, Mr. Neugebauer, you're recognized okay, for Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I want to go back to a little bit of what the, the ranking member was talking about, uh, Mr. Secretary, because I'm a little confused now. Uh, on page 11, confidentiality, the Committee of the Congress receiving counsel's report shall maintain the confidentiality of the identity of the companies described in accordance with paragraph A3, the information relating to dispute resolutions described in accordance with paragraph then I go over to page, I uh, believe it is, uh, 17, uh, and it says the council and the board, which is the Fed, uh, may not publicly release a list of companies identified under this section, and what they're talking about is the identification of financial companies for heightened prudential standards for financial stability purposes. So what, what are those companies? And, and well, the determination for those companies would be their capital structure, number one. And those would be categorized into well-capitalized, which we hope all companies are well-capitalized, but then we have undercapitalized, significantly uncapitalized, critically undercapitalized uh, companies. And the, and the council is going to make, and I guess along with their prudential regulator, make that decision of what categories they fall into. And you're telling me that, you're going to disclose that information. The, the bill says you can't disclose that information. And I'm a little concerned about what, what is the answer to the question? Uh, let me yes just again no. start with the simple thing. It does not make sense to have a system in which community banks and regional banks are held to the same standards that are necessary to protect the system from the risk posed by large, complicated uh, financial institutions. You need to have a different regime, tougher set of constraints applied to them because they because they pose more risks. Mr. Secretary, I get the different here. regimes. I just want to know: Are we going to disclose and, and the I think, companies or not? And, and are we going to disclose the? But, it, but it's a. It, you have to start with this thing: They need to be subject to a different set of constraints. I've heard nobody suggest that what's appropriate for a community bank is appropriate for a major global firm. Let's now, if that's true, community banks out of it. Let's just talk about the, the large banks. If that's true, then they have to be subject to higher standards. And, and I am sure, for the reasons many of you said, they will be disclosing the regime they're operating under to their creditors, their equity holders, analysts will know, and it'll be clear how much capital they're holding. And I think that's the best way to get the balance right. Again, what you want to avoid, I think, as many of you said in the past, is you don't want to have the sense there's a fixed list of companies out there that are going to benefit from special support. We want to avoid that risk. And that's why the, that's why the chairman tried to strike the balance in the draft the way it's done. I'm going to reclaim my time because there will have to be a list. This bill calls for a list to be uh, determined because that's the council's responsibility. They're Would you gonna... prefer it be a public list? I think we have to decide because I don't know how you can keep it secret because uh, these, these companies, if I'm a creditor or a shareholder of a company and, I, and, I, and it's not disclosed to me that my invest, I'm investing in a company that's critically undercapitalized, does the government have some fiduciary responsibility to, that, that well, I, again, I, th I, I think that, it's this that way. you're withholding information from? I, I, I'm not sure we're disagreeing. I think that if the company, the company will be held to tougher standards. It will have to disclose how much capital it holds. It's the analysts that cover it, its creditors, its equity holders will understand that, and that's probably the right way to get the balance. Well, where, where I'm headed with this is that the, the resolution authority now that is proposed under this, this bill uh, basically doesn't necessarily, and we haven't in, in some of the resolutions of, of these entities, followed what would be the, the rule of law. Uh, and in, this, in the sense that uh, certain creditors were given preferences uh, in, for example, the GM, uh, or they were intimidated in, in, into taking a position that they didn't necessarily want, want to take. Now, GM, was, GM was managed under the established bankruptcy procedures of the laws of the land. The Congress recognized many, many years ago that those procedures do not work for banks because banks borrow short, they take on leverage, they cannot function effectively under that kind of regime. Thus, a different regime, very much modeled in the bankruptcy code, that establishes clear priorities for creditors. But again, that system exists today for banks and thrifts. Why not, just go, is just why not just go ahead and use the bankruptcy code as the Republican alternative and set up a special but uh, if you, bankruptcy if you, Again, I, I don't think it's, this is complicated. Look what happened to Lehman in the wake of Lehman. Bankruptcy code was the only option available in that context. It caused catastrophic damage. 
That's why in the wake of the SNL crisis, and actually well before that, Congress recognized that for banks, entities operate like banks, they need to have a special set of protections to allow for the equivalent of bankruptcy. But had we had a different provision in the bankruptcy code for, for a Lehman like or financial institution, we could have done that and make sure that That's effectively it. what this does. That's effectively what this is designed to do. The gentleman's time has expired.